A class action lawsuit has been filed against Navy Federal Credit Union alleging that they've discriminated against Black and Latino mortgage applicants. My name is Sam, I'm an out-of-state investor. Thank you so much for watching another video. Make sure you like this video and subscribe to the channel. In this episode, we're going to talk about the allegations that are listed in this article. We're also going to talk about the profile of two plaintiffs who the lawsuit is based around. And I'll give you my thoughts and also some things that you should be thinking about as an investor. All right, so let's jump right in. So the first plaintiff is Sherelle Jacob. She's a 40-year-old Black resident of Washington State, and her husband, who is in the armed services, together they make about $200,000 in salary. They have no debt. They have ample savings. Both have exceptional credit scores above 800. This is according to the complaint. And the Lawsuit says Jacob and her husband sought a mortgage from Navy Federal in October 2023 to support the purchase of what's called a modest family home. And they were denied before being approved by another lender. So I have a couple questions. So ample savings doesn't give a number. And I think there's a reason they're not listing that. And then also a modest family home. Is this a million dollar home? Is this a $1.5 million home? Like what's modest, right? And I'm not saying that they weren't discriminated against. What I'm saying is there's some more information that I would have liked to see to really get a good understanding of their full financial profile. And also what was their down payment? How long have they been in their jobs? I'm assuming at least one of them is W-2, is the other maybe 1099 or getting income in some other way. I would like to know some of those details as well to really have a full picture of their financial status. And it also didn't share what the denial reason was. If you watched my last episode talking about the gentleman who was denied based on the CNN report, it said that he was denied basically because he had too much debt. It doesn't say why this lady and her husband were denied. So I'm curious to know what that denial reason actually was. And then I'm also curious what the lender is, who they got approved with, and if their requirements were different in that process. And then I'm also wondering if something happened during the underwriting process when they request your documentation and things like that, if something was incorrect or if something didn't meet one of their qualifications. So a lot more questions that I have. Doesn't mean they weren't discriminated against. Doesn't mean they were. Who knows? You know, the lawsuit, of course, will hopefully let us know the truth. So again, I am surprised to an extent based on the little information that is available that they were denied. But again, like I said, there's a lot of information we don't know. So I can't say discrimination didn't happen. So the second person is Lakita Oliver. So she is a 44 year old black resident of Miami Dade County, Florida. She works as a capital improvement project analyst. It sounds like a cool job and previously co-owned a small business. According to the complaint, she makes approximately 100,000 per year in salary, has good credit, a history of home ownership, and very little debt. After a month long process, her mortgage was denied. So similarly, how long has she been at her job? What exactly is her credit score? How much was the home she was trying to purchase? What was the down payment that she was putting down? Those are some of the questions that I have. And also, what is her debt to income ratio? That is a very important question and is a factor and something that goes into it, right? Now, I want to make it clear. I'm not saying that discrimination did not happen. I don't know. But what I'm trying to encourage you to do is think a little deeper. Think about what information might not be shared, might not be listed here. And I'm sure it'll come out during the lawsuit. I'm sure you know, the judge hopefully will have access to everything to really make a decision and, you know, figure out exactly what's going on. Lastly, there's no denial reason li listed. It's just saying that she was denied. And that's the problem that I have with these articles and how they're structured and how CNN really has been covering the development of this story. It feels like everything has lined up. So they released the article last week. And then a couple of days later, this lawsuit comes out, right? And so I don't think it makes sense for people to jump to the conclusion of discrimination as somebody who's an outsider. If you if you are the person who you feel who feels you are being discriminated against, I can't knock that. You know, you have the right to pursue that in court. You have the right to let a judge decide. I'm not I'm not going to 
say you shouldn't do that. But I will say people like me and you who are watching, be careful with the assumptions that you make. Be careful with the conclusions that you draw based on a news article. The fact of the matter is news articles need to get clicks. They need to get clicks. If they don't get clicks, it all goes into the advertising. Everything ties together. So they need to make the article in a way and put things in the article that are compelling enough to make you want to click and read it, right? And so just be mindful of that. Be mindful of that and don't necessarily take everything you read in the media as truth because in many cases, it's not. A lot of things are sensationalized. I'm not saying that this is, but you know that, that's what I mean. And the, the other problem I have with these type of lawsuits is, you know, hey, perhaps if it if it's found to be true that many people were discriminated against, then perhaps, you know, maybe federal will make some changes in the way they do the mortgages. Perhaps they'll make a commitment to the black community, the Latino community, something of that nature. However, from a monetary perspective, the winner in these cases is the lawyer, right? Typically, there's so many people in a class action lawsuit. Have you ever gotten a check for like five bucks from uh, maybe a cable provider or a phone service provider for some data breach or something that happened in a class action lawsuit or from your car manufacturer or you're from Honda, Acura, whatever, with like five bucks, that's probably what's going to happen. That's usually what happens because there's so many people who are part of this class action lawsuit. And when you take out the lawyer's cut, and the thing is there's multiple firms, there's Ben Crump's firm and a couple of other firms who are part of this lawsuit. So they all need to get their cut. And then the quarters go back to the people in the lawsuit. So that's just the reality of it, right? From a monetary perspective, individuals really aren't going to get much and typically don't typically don't get much in a class action lawsuit. And I believe there were over 3,700, about 3,700 Black people who were denied. And that's not even counting the Latinos, right? So from a monetary perspective, I don't, I don't see the benefit of it. But, you know, from a policy perspective, if it is found that a lot of people were actually discriminated against and should have been approved based on their qualifications and based on Navy Federal's policy, then, you know, I'm, I'm curious to see what will happen. Comment below. Let me know what you think. Let me know if you think there's merit to this lawsuit. Let me know if you think clash action lawsuits make sense in this case. I'm curious to know what you think. So let's dig a little bit deeper into the lawsuit and some of the things that it's alleging. So the lawsuit accuses Navy Federal of violating the Fair Housing Act of 1968 and the Equal Credit Opportunity Act, which prohibit lending discrimination based on race. Something that you may not know is that back in the day, there was something called redlining. And redlining basically meant, you know, these white guys would draw a red line around neighborhoods where they consider risky and you couldn't get loans and mortgages and stuff if you lived in those areas. Who usually lived in those areas? Black people. And so it put us behind decades and decades from being able to purchase a home. And so the Fair Housing Act in 1968 was an attempt to put a stop to those kind of things and just discrimination overall in the housing process. So just some context in case you hadn't heard about it before. The suit seeks to represent a broad case class of potential plaintiffs, all Navy federal minority residential loan applications from 2018 through the present, whose applications were denied, approved at higher interest rates, or subject to less favorable, favorable terms compared to similar non-minority applicants, as well as those whose applicants were processed more slowly than typical. So here's the thing. If someone's mortgage application was processed more slowly than normal, the first thing that I want to ask is why? Was there certain documentation that took longer to receive? Was there more documentation required based on some sort of qualification that wasn't met to verify certain things? Was there an exchange of back and forth questions? Like a lot of things could be the reason for an application being processed more slowly than normal. It does not necessarily mean there was discrimination because an application was processed slowly. Doesn't mean that you don't have the right to file a lawsuit. You can sue for anything in this country, but that's where my mind goes. I'm wondering why, what could have caused things to take a little bit longer. When you talk about the interest rates, when you talk about the favorable terms, like no two applicants are the same. No two applicants have the same exact financial profile, financial history, 
credit score, debt to income ratio, uh, down payment, home home purchase price, all those things. It's not, it's not the same for everyone. And so there could be a number of reasons why somebody is getting a higher interest rate. If you applied for a mortgage several months or even a year before somebody else, somebody else the first thing is the interest rates have continually been going up. So if you applied later than someone who's similar, you probably applied when interest rates were higher. The other thing is you typically have an opportunity to lock your interest rate during the process. Some choose not to lock the interest rate and some do lock the interest rate. If you don't lock the interest rate, then your interest rate, when it's all said and done, can be a little bit higher or can be lower depending on the market. So again, saying that you got a higher interest rate than someone else doesn't make sense to me because there's so many factors that go into it. And this is why it's important to understand the mortgage process. Talk to a lender. Make sure you understand the process. Make sure you understand how all of the stuff works. But as far as interest rate, there are a number of reasons that your interest rate could be higher than somebody else. And I don't really think it makes sense to compare your individual situation to someone else's. Let's say, for example, someone is looking to, someone was looking to buy a property for 400,000 in January, 2023 in let's say Iowa. The other person was looking to buy a $900,000 house in New York City in November. Those are two different interest rates at that time, two different price points. And to qualify for that property, two di completely different financial profiles are needed. Do you understand where I'm getting at with this? So I'm wondering how they're making these comparisons. Is it truly apples to apples, similar financial profiles, similar home purchase prices, down payment? Like what factors exactly are similar? That's what I'm curious about. And I'm hoping that it'll come out during this lawsuit. But again, I really don't like how these articles are written because they give you bare bones information and expect you to draw conclusions based on that. I don't think we should operate like that. I think we should always look deeper and see what's really going on. Let me know what you think. Comment below. Let me know if you agree, if you disagree, if you think just off the bat, this is pure discrimination. I'm open to your thoughts. So let me know. So here's the other thing. I'm wondering what are the qualifications to participate in this class action lawsuit? Is it anybody who's been denied and feels like they've been discriminated against? Is it those who have been denied with certain financial profiles? Because what if certain folks, and I'm sure there are certain folks of all races who were justly denied, who just should not have ever been approved for the mortgage. They probably shouldn't have been pre-approved. Maybe the person who pre-approved them did a terrible job, didn't look at their information and push them along through the process. And then when it's time to close on a property, they pull the rug out from underneath them and say, hey, you're actually denied. What if some of those people should have been denied? It, it, there's, there's a ton of things that can happen from pre-approval to closing on the property that could cause you to be denied. And so I'm wondering about that too. The article also does not share that. It's, it's very vague with who the broad set of plaintiffs are. So I'm, I'm curious about that too. And you let me know what you think about that. Let me know if you think that even matters. So I'm curious to know how this all works out and let me know what you think. You know, if you agree that they should proceed with a lawsuit, let me know. If you think otherwise, let me know as well. I would love to hear from you. So make sure you leave a comment on this video. If you're on the audio side, make sure to send me a message. Let me know what you think. So that's the latest update on Navy Federal Credit Union. I will definitely continue to keep you all updated on exactly what's going on. I greatly appreciate you joining and checking this one out. If you haven't checked out the episode where I discussed CNN's article about the fact that Navy Federal Credit Union has denied half of their Black mortgage applicants, definitely make sure to check that out. I'll link it here so you can take a look and let me know what you think. Let me know what your thoughts are. If you agree, disagree, as always. If you're on the audio side, make sure you leave that five-star rating and review. If you are on YouTube, make sure you like and subscribe to the channel. Thank you all so much, and I'll talk to you soon.